I'm a biologist, uh, and for my doctoral dissertation, I decided to focus on questions concerning the policy, management, and historical ecology of the Florida Keys coral reef ecosystem. And one of the questions I asked was, are reef experts' baselines shifting? Uh, the shifting baselines concept goes like this. Individuals will accept as a baseline the potentially degraded ecosystem they see, right, rather than looking back and evaluating perhaps a more pristine baseline or ecosystem from the past. Uh, many people don't realize it, but the Florida Keys are a great mystery. Um, they're a mystery in terms of what was there prior to the 1970s when intense quantitative studies have been conducted. Uh, what did the seafloor look like prior to the 1970s, right? What does a healthy Florida Keys coral reef look like? What you see here is Acropora palmata, uh, or what's commonly known as Elkhorn coral. Uh, Elkhorn coral used to form the canopy of the reef at one point in time. Um, underneath that canopy, many species of fish and crustaceans lived and thrived. This is a photo of Carries Fort Reef off of Key Largo, Florida. Uh, and as you can see, this acropora is creating a, a forest of stony coral. Now that doesn't look like that anymore, right? One of the things my study showed is that up to 70% of coral scientists under the age of 40 have never seen that, right? And that's an astonishing fact to me. That's like saying, you know, you're a young scientist who studies forests but you've never seen a, a landscape dominated by trees. Instead, those experts are introduced to this, right? Uh, they spend the early part of their lives watching PBS specials. My son is over there, he watches them all the time. Uh, even Finding Nemo, right? And you see all these colorful co corals and all these things. And then you get there and you get rubble. My question was, what impact, if any, is this having on our experts' ability to evaluate, uh, restore, and manage these degraded ecosystems? I should also mention that this photo was taken by Doc Dr. Phil Dustin. He's the one that did one of the earliest quantitative studies of the reef in the Florida Keys. Also, regardless of shifting baselines, I wanted to know what is the baseline, right? Uh, what do scientists say uh, is a healthy reef? Is 30% coral cover sufficient? Is it 40%? So on and so forth. And believe it or not, this is a significant controversy in the literature as you know, some scientists say we should use Dr. Dustin's studies as the baseline. Others say we should use, um, you, know, uh, 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 you know, ancient reefs uh, and fossil records as the baseline. Other scientists say, you know, we should use um, uh, Louis Agassi's uh, work from the mid-1850s. So what I did is I conducted 54 in-depth interviews averaging about 40 minutes apiece. Um, and this represented over 130,000 combined research dives and over 1,500 years worth of combined experience. So what this culminated into is basically a record of transpired events. Uh, if you were interested in studying the Titanic, for example, you know, if you wanted to know you know, how that event happened, who would you be most excited to talk to? Probably the folks that were there, right? You want to talk to the guy who was on a raft looking at the ship go down. He could tell you what happened. So that was some of the rationale behind the way I did what I did. I also got some anecdotes from those scientists. So not only did I look at 
you know, what the baselines were and what they should be. I wanted to create some, t some type of record uh, of what these scientists saw and experienced. For example, one scientist who started research diving in the late 60s noticed that uh, sweeper fish had started to disappear. This photo is over 30 years old, and that makes sense because you can see the sweeper fish hanging out underneath this, pan uh, this stand of aquapora, which has also largely disappeared. Another scientist noted that flower anemones started to disappear uh, by 2001. And another scientist said, you know, folks today will go to the Keys and say, hey, that's a large barracuda, and that barracuda may only be four feet, okay? Another example of potential shifting baselines. So the question is, the scientific data back up recollections, right? Can you use experts and scientists' recollections to recreate the past? So though I won't be presenting many of my primary results today, I'll let the uh, peer review process take care of that. I will say that uh, many scientists expressed grave concern, as you can understand, and many of them said that we need global solutions. Uh, the Florida Keys sit in an ocean impacted by seven billion people, not just the individuals uh, in South Florida. What you see here is a photograph of a restoration project. Um, uh, in this case, this is Acropora cervicornis. And what will happen is scientists will take those stands of coral and go ahead and uh, transplant them into degraded, uh, a degraded reef somewhere else. But based on the, the uh, projected and current changes in the physical conditions uh, of the reef, namely pH, um, and temperature, uh, scientists express concern for the viability, long-term viability, even for these types of projects. What I suggest is that we need to strengthen uh, our lines of communication. Namely, we need to be able to ask scientists how we deal with questions in a coordinated fashion. For example, do you guys remember the BP oil spill? Uh, and how traumatic an event that was. That, w that was also a pretty chaotic event, right? You looked on the news and, I mean, everyone had an opinion uh, and a solution. Even Kevin Costner, you know, came out to save the day. <laughs> Not sure what happened with that, but in other words, right, um, you know, if we need uh, solutions to problems, uh, we should go to scientists and we should ask, and we should have a mechanism to do that. And uh, perhaps we have demonstrated that with this, with this study. In conclusion, not too bad, right? In conclusion, always a good line in the talk. <laughs> the title of this talk is The Rise of Phantom Ecology. Uh, because we have destroyed ecosystems like this one, right? we'll be charged with patching and mending this ecosystem, okay? Uh, that'll involve, um, you know, what we'll have to do is employ more of the life, si life sciences as well as policy to come up with solutions. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is mimic ghosts or phantoms, right? Because there's nothing there, okay? So if you can imagine Frankenstein on an ecosystem level, level scale, We'll glue new pieces to create something totally new. Thank you. Thank you.